Just over five years ago, then-President Barack Obama changed the name of the tallest peak in North America. The summit known as Mount McKinley became Denali once again, an original native Alaskan name with deep cultural significance. Today, as our nation wrestles with the past and questions about those we've chosen to honor, another mountain may be in line for a new name as well. From Colorado, Barry Peterson has the story. The majesty of Mount Evans, as captured by preeminent Colorado photographer John Fielder, named for John Evans, an 1800s Colorado territorial governor. Some say the naming honors the winning of the West. Can you see it from here? Yeah. Right there, front and center, right over those trees. Location that it, most anybody can see in the Denver metro area. Ernest House Jr. is a member of the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe and former executive director of the Colorado Commission of Indian Affairs. And the great grandson of Jack House, the last hereditary chief of the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe. To House, the name Evans means this. His connection with the Sand Creek Massacre of 9, November 29, 1864, will forever go down in history on a mark on his status as somebody who has been a historical figure for the state of Colorado. He didn't participate in the massacre. He had a level of culpability. Evans issued a proclamation saying, kill and destroy all hostile Indians. So tribes surrendered to the government for protection, and some settled at Sand Creek. But in an early morning attack, a group of the U.S. cavalry slaughtered mostly elderly men, women, and children. Today, it's a national historic site. Now, the U.S. Board of Geographic Names is considering changing the name of Mount Evans, along with other Colorado sites, Negro Creek, Chinaman Gulch, Squaw Mountain. Squaw is a derogatory word made up by non-Native Americans seen as both racist and a sexual slur. Patty Limerick is faculty director of the Center of the American West at the University of Colorado Boulder and a member of the state advisory group on the name changes. Do you take into account that maybe it's difficult for people to use that particular name? Like, I don't sure. want to call something squaw. It's an exceedingly pejorative term. Right. I mean, I think for a certain percentage uh, of the population, saying it would be a uncomfortable moment. For 50 years, Randy Wheelock has hiked, biked, and camped on Mount Evans. He is also in the county commission where Mount Evans is located. And while he supports the name change, a constituent does not. And he said to me that I grew up here and it's the only name that I've ever known that by. And that means a lot to me and I don't know why we had to change it. How do you recognize the, the people who say, but no, this is my growing up, this is my heritage? We really have to listen to that. And those people are being sincere as well. But there's something deeper going on here Statues symbolizing America's slavery era toppled. Protest over black people who have been killed and calls to face centuries of systemic racism. And changing century-old names of places named mostly for white men as a way to broaden our history. Well, we understand that the legacy of white supremacy around indigenous and Native American people, the removal of Native people from their lands. These were, of course, egregious events. Erica Dunbar is a professor of history at Rutgers University. Our question to her, why now? We're reckoning with this very real issue around social justice, around representation, but it spilled over into into the public space, into this public sphere of renaming um, peaks or mountains or forests or parks. This conversation about who we want to be as Americans. Tell me what you're going to feel when you look at that mountain and it's got an Indian name. You know, I think the, the first thing I'm going to think about is those tribal elders that I spoke with, with the Shiner Apo tribes, that were sobbing that took an opportunity to open up about what the impact Sand Creek had on them, but also those tribes that were forcibly removed from our beautiful state that continue to call Colorado home, that would love for an opportunity to go back to a mountain, take their family and say, this used to be ours and it's still being recognized. We're being acknowledged. What's in a name? It turns out everything. 
For CBS This Morning, Saturday, Barry Peterson, Denver. The question, yeah, the question that Shakespeare asked, what's in the name? Squaw Valley in Lake Tahoe, they are changing their yeah. name from Squaw. Yeah, owning it, yeah. owning all of it. That's who we are as Americans, and we've got to own the, the good and the bad. No matter what the intent was in the beginning.